In the early 20th century, a movement of concerned Christians, particularly in urban areas, committed to confronting the needs of those experiencing hunger, poverty, and homelessness, created the Rescue Mission. And for over a century, that movement has met the needs of hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children. And since 1941, City Mission in Washington, Pennsylvania, has been doing just that, meeting basic human needs with compassion and the love of Christ. Today on State of Independence, we'll meet one of the key team members overseeing the transformation of this historic outreach. You'll learn how five years ago, a fire destroyed some of its landmark properties, but triggered a wave of generosity that's allowing City Mission Hope to reach even more people in need. You will not want to miss this conversation. Stay with us. Well, our guest is a highly decorated human being, a retired lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. She holds a doctorate in psychology and a master's degree in psychology and journalism. She was the first woman commissioned to the armed services from the College of William and Mary. But like so many in ministry, Sally's story doesn't really make sense. <laughs> what, is, what is a person like Sally with a wall full of degrees and professional accolades doing at a rescue mission? How did God lead her to this station of service? And what is God doing in Washington County that we need to hear about? Well, first, watch this. In 1941, the city mission was established with serving meals and doing basic chapel services and providing overnight stays to guests. And since then, it's developed to more and more and more, and it just keeps growing. A lot of the family members that we serve are truly one paycheck away from homelessness, one illness away from homelessness. So our goal is really to help provide that support network, that safety net. A woman comes in and she's broken and she's uh, maybe even been battered or just lost everything. Whatever brings her through those doors, just to watch the staff here come around that lady and just to love her back to life. You know, she's just been given bad opportunities. Each person needs to be invested in. And I see each day that somebody forgets their potential and they look at their problems or what brought them here as a barrier to get back into that place. So myself and the staff here at City Mission, we help each person break down those barriers piece by piece to help them get back to that independent, sustainable, successful life outside these four walls. The things about working in the kitchen is that I'm able to work with our, our residents as far as their work therapy. Uh, I'm able to show them a lot of skills. I'm, I'm able to show them that uh, they don't need to give up on themselves, that they, they can believe in themselves. And, and that's a real important part of the mission here. A large part of what we do is address barriers and goals related to helping someone to prevent an episode of homelessness really meeting people where they are and putting pieces in place to help that not come to fruition so they don't have to go back into homelessness or experience homelessness for the first time. Just to see the faces of the ladies light up after knowing that there are people out there who care and who love them, regardless of where they come from or some mistakes or grief and stuff that they have in their life. We do a lot of good work, even the community walk-ins that come in. We show them that there's hope out there and that there is a, a better way for them to, to live. So it's not your typical get handed a food bag when you come in the door. It's more of a case-by-case, -case, individual basis whenever people come for services. And I think that that helps to really distinguish what we do from what some other providers in the community do. Sometimes people just need some help up. They need some, someone that's willing to invest in them and to see that potential or that ability to grow. And we like to do that for people. For over 75 years, City Mission has shared Christ, sheltered, healed, and restored the homeless to independent living without discrimination. Our goal is to help each man, woman, child, or veteran who walks through our doors to become a healthy, productive member of society. 
Last year, we served over 100,000 meals, provided 6,000 medical services, helped 134 individuals obtain employment, served over 670 families, and provided 43,500 nights of shelter. With your help, we can continue to offer these services to the most vulnerable. At City Mission, all this is possible. It simply takes the courage to change. Your support is vital to our work. Your support changes lives. Wonderful story. Sally, welcome to State of Independence. We're so honored you accepted our invitation. Uh, this is a great story. Uh, you know, this is, this is yet another way that people are able to serve, serve God uh, by, by loving their neighbors like they love themselves, by caring about people just as much as they care about themselves. And, and, and so I'm, I'm just heartened by this story. So, and then there's you. So we have this, 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 this wonderful woman who's got this impressive background, uh, you know, former uh, retired lieutenant colonel in the Army, the first woman so designated from the College of William and Mary. Uh, you've got a, a doctorate, a master's and a doctorate degree in psychology. And, 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 and here it is, and also a master's degree in journalism. And here it is where you, you would otherwise be highly sought after in the job market. I mean, somebody would want to hire you and pay you lots of money to sit on corporate boards based on where you've been and what you do and all the talents that you have. And uh, instead, you are, you are at City Mission, uh, helping the least of these my brethren, so they say, uh, but our brothers and sisters, no different than you and me, except for the circumstances. Uh, so I, uh, I am from Washington County. This was my, this is where I'm from originally. Um, and uh, I traveled all over the world. And when my parents were ill and I came back here, um, I had set up a consulting firm. And I worked both as a volunteer and as a consultant um, in Washington with nonprofits. And I saw some very, very special things happening here at City Mission. And I wanted to be a part of that. So I came on board first as a volunteer and then as a consultant, and now I've been here for nine years. Outstanding, outstanding. So, so there must be still a story, uh, you know, somebody talented like you with, with, you know, a former, like I said, a retired lieutenant colonel in the Army. Uh, uh, you're, you're a Christian person. And, 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 and that, that's what makes all the difference in the world. You don't just have a bunch of degrees and, and, and accolades, but, you, but you're somebody who follows Christ. And that's wonderful. Is, 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 is that part of the reason why you're where you are at City Mission? It is absolutely the prime reason why I am why I am. Everyone here at City Mission is Christian. It's a Christ-centered homeless shelter. And I felt like God was leading me here. And it feels like he's still doing that. Yeah, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So tell everybody where, uh, where you are in Washington County. Uh, uh, this is a big commonwealth and, uh, and, and people who are in the center part of the state or the northeastern part of the state or the southeastern part of the state know that Washington County is a little distance away. So, 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 so tell them where Washington County is and then tell them something about, about uh, the, 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 the people that live there that have the, the needs that you service at the city mission. Sure. There's a misconception, Joe, that the that homelessness is really in huge ur urban areas like Los Angeles or New York. That it's not just not simply true. Um, Washington, Pennsylvania, is in Washington County, which is in the very southwestern tip of Pennsylvania. We are famous for the Whiskey Rebellion. Uh, we have a population, our county has a population of about 200,000, and our city of Washington, PA, has about 13,000 people. But what's really um, amazing about homelessness is that it strikes all different socioeconomic groups, and it also strikes um, all different um, urban areas, um, backwater areas, um, t town and country. It, it just, um, especially with the opioid epidemic going on now, um, we just don't know um, where homelessness will be. We find it everywhere in the United States. And that's one of the problems. And that's why we address it here. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, people that come to you are homeless. Nobody, uh, of course, wants to be homeless. Uh, you know, nobody wants, but, but is there, uh, would you say that drugs or drug abuse is the leading reason why people end up homeless or, or is it that they lost a job? Is there, among the people you serve, is there one thing that's the, the biggest uh, cause of, of, of homelessness? 
Well, I, there are many reasons. Um, I would say that addiction is, a, is a, some sort of substance abuse, drugs or alcohol, is a huge factor. Um, but what we find lately is with housing prices so high that many people think they can pay a mortgage and then end up not able to. In fact, with Washington County, in the city of Washington, about 20 percent of the population of the city live below the federal poverty guidelines. So they are basically one decision, one bad move away from homelessness themselves. So it's not just you know, you're, so you would think a, a typical person on skid row in the Bowery. Um, there are plenty of other reasons why people are homeless today. Yeah. Well, well, I think the most important thing is that you love them, uh, that people come there. It, it, how do you create that environment at City Mission where people know that they're loved? I mean, obviously, there's got to be some sense of embarrassment. Maybe there are people who don't want to come because they're embarrassed about what has happened. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you welcome them when they come? Well, I'll tell you, that's a that's a really good question. I think all of us being Christians who are employed here, we say there but for the grace of God go I. And we know that a, a series of bad decisions or some mistakes um, can make people very vulnerable to homelessness. A lot of the people that we work with have childhood trauma. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example of that. I was We were um, cleaning up one of the ball fields and I was working with uh, some of our guys uh, who are residents and we had bags and we were cleaning up the trash just to do it as a, a community project. And one of the men stood there looking out across this Pony League ball field. And he said, boy, I wish that I'd had a place like this when I was eight years old. And I said, why, Jim, what were you doing when you were eight? And he said, drinking. At eight his years father, old? He was, his father was an alcoholic, his two older brothers, and both of his uncles. His first drink was at eight. His first blackout was at 10. He just never had a shot. Wow. So we understand that God calls on us to help everyone. And the people who are homeless, especially the people um, in this area, respond to what we do and what we say. They come in, we try very hard to love them. We say, here's a meal, here's a bed. And Dean Gartland, who is our um, CEO, will say, but let me tell you, I would much, much rather you not have a home here on earth and be able to go to heaven than for you to have a mansion here on earth and not be able to get into heaven. So why don't you try this our way? Your best thinking has gotten you to a homeless shelter. Why don't you try this our way and think about what we have to say as Christians in today's society and how it can help us live our best lives. Do people, uh, have people, have you had people that come in that, that have been changed, that, that have, have come to Christ uh, when, they, when they hear that message? We call it a life transformational program because so many of the people who leave, leave as committed Christians. Now, I will tell you, it is non-discriminatory. You can come into City Mission if you're homeless. You can leave a Muslim. You can leave Jewish. You know, we don't, we don't try to shove anything down anyone's throats. But we do try to say Christ is love, and this is love in action. We are his hands and feet. And we can help you because there are so many things binding you to homelessness, legal issues, medical issues, there are drug and alcohol issues, there are life trauma issues. Work with us and let us untie all of those ropes that bind you to homelessness so that once you get a key to your own apartment, then you can sustain that life. But do, 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 do whole families come to you or? or um... We work. We work with four distinct populations. We worked with men, homeless men, homeless women, homeless women with children, and homeless veterans. So we don't have facilities for our full families. You know, we're thinking of, we're going to be building another facility in the next three or four years, and we're hoping to be able to include some families. But right now it's women with their children. And about 84% of the homeless families out there have a woman as the head of that family. Wow. What, what percentage of, of, of your population uh, falls into that category of women, uh, homeless women with their children? Okay, so we have 160 beds in our homeless facility. We work with 90 men, 16 single women, 22 veterans. And then we work with, in our 11 uh, family suites, we work with 11 women and up to 21 children. So a homeless woman can come here with up to three kids. Wow. Wow, that, that's something. So, uh, and then you've got to coordinate with the, the women and their children what school they go to and, 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 mm -hmm. then, and then a transportation from the shelter to school and then, and, and then back. 
Yes, absolutely. Is, is there a stigma for the kids, the fact that, that they're living in a homeless shelter, that they're at City Mission? Is that is that a problem for them at the schools that they attend? I'll, I'll tell you, we have really beautiful little apartments. Well, actually, they're suites uh, where we have a bedroom for the children, a nice bath with a bathtub. We have a nice little kitchen area. And the children will say, I'm going back to my apartment. I don't think there's any stigma at all. It's really quite beautiful. Yeah, that's very kind. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, obviously, a lot of thought's been given to this. Um, who, who, who has raised the money for City Mission to be in existence? Are you funded? You, I'm sure you don't, you don't get federal funding. So, so how, where does the money come from to provide this kind of wonderful support for people who need it? Correct. We have no federal funding at all. We've been here for 81 years, and we are supported by families, churches, individuals, corporations um, who give us our budget every single year to work with these 160 homeless people. In fact, we have when we send out an appeal that says that a meal costs $2.26, we have some women who've been giving to us for 10, 20 years, and they will send us a check for $20.66 and say, please spend this for food. And we do. So tell me uh, what you do for your veterans, because uh, there are lots of veterans out there in cities and towns everywhere who are uh, sadly uh, uh, homeless. Um, they've had a, a tough time. Uh, maybe they're are, they, are most of them traumatized from their time in the military? Uh, many of them are. And it's, a, it's an, an under-unknown fact that only one in every five veterans will utilize the um, VA system. Um, so the U.S. has this great system across the country um, for veterans, and only 20% of them use it because it's not where they live, because they go in and they see several different doctors. They don't like the reputation of the VA. But for some reason, the, the veterans in western Pennsylvania did, weren't going very much. So we said, let's, let's serve them where they are, and let's build a veteran shelter right here, and we will serve them in their own backyard. And that's what we do. What, what is the, the, the typical military veteran who comes to you, what, what does their story look like? Well, uh, so they, I, usually they, have, they can be anywhere from 20 years old to 65 years old. Um, usually they've been disenfranchised somehow from the system. A lot of the military MOSs, um, um, artillerymen, for example, doesn't translate very well into civilian life. Many times they don't have a lot of family support. Often they've turned to um, drinking or drugs to deal with the trauma that they have from wartime called PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And they're usually people who haven't, there are many um, facilities out there and there are many charities out there for um, veterans, but there are not very many charities that will take a homeless vet veteran and move them from homelessness all the way to independence. So that's one of the important things we do. And we do that, one, one of the ways that we do that is by helping them find jobs and by working through our work readiness program to help them find work so that they can sustain a life. Once they leave here, they're free of alcohol and drug problems. They're free of the medical problems that they came in with because if you're sleeping on the street, it's really easy to ignore your medical problems. Yeah. So we help, our, we help them through a program. We help them with um, food then shelter, then we say to them, what are the issues that are tying you to homelessness that we can help you with? Do you have 60 traffic tickets in Wisconsin we can help you with? Oh boy. Do you, do you have um, a medical issue that you haven't dealt with? Do you have drug and alcohol problems? Can we help you with that? Do you have family issues so you don't have a support system? Can we connect you to a church? There are so many, many ways that we can help people move back toward homelessness so that then when they go to a work readiness internship and they're ready for a job, they can sustain this life that they've begun here. Well, well this is great to learn a little bit about uh, about this population. I want to ask you more about it because uh, obviously it's... Uh, uh, you, you know something about this group because you were a lieutenant colonel in the Army. Yes, so, I'm a so, lieutenant colonel. Right, yes, so, so you, you, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this after the break. I'm going to give you a chance to catch your, your breath, and then we'll come back and, uh, and talk some more with, uh, with Sally. Stay with us. You're watching Joe Watkins' State of Independence on Lighthouse TV, positively different. Share your comments about today's program in the comment box at joewatkins.org. So, so, so Sally, I guess that's my, my, my big question is, uh, 
Uh, obviously, there are more people than you, and, and you don't have the typical profile for somebody at, at, uh, at City Mission. Uh, but, but for those who do interface with you, do they know that you're a retired uh, lieutenant colonel in the Army? Um, I think I don't I certainly don't hide it. A number of them do. It's on the city mission website that that's my former career. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that they they do know that. But I'll tell you, Joe, what's even more important than what I've done is who I am as a Christian and what I believe about the potential of the people who are here. And I think their potential is absolutely unlimited for most of them. They just need a shot. Yeah. 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 Well, that, that's the right attitude, the right spirit uh, to care about people and to and to. Um, to encourage them. Uh, mm -hmm. What a wonderful thing to encourage them. I suppose that's mm -hmm. what most of the folks need, right? They, they need a healthy dose of encouragement because I'm guessing that the great majority of them are, are discouraged people. I mean, maybe some of them have given up. I, I think uh, people don't understand what the, there's just, all of the literature shows that there's just such a connection between unemployment, um, unemployment and homelessness. And so one of the things we do is say, yeah, you can absolutely have sustainable employment. We, we love you. We are Christians. God loves you. Um, what, what can we do to help you live your best life? So many of the homeless have barriers to employment and people don't realize um, a lot of them have low educational attainment. They have limited past work experience. Um, they have mental health or substance abuse problems, lack of adequate transportation. Some of them don't have a driver's license. Um, they don't have bank credit or they have credit. Uh, they have criminal histories. So we, we start with people who, who most of the time can't even get into, a, get into a computerized pay system because they don't have some sort of a picture ID. Wow. So we say, let's do the first thing you need. Let's get you a copy of your birth certificate copy of a social security card for you. Let's get you a state ID with your picture on it. And now when you get a job at AccuTrax or, or one of the other companies that we work with, you actually have a card that will allow you to get into their computerized pay system and you can get a paycheck. That, That's the first thing we found that they had lost those all important documents. So we started with that. And then we said, now let's work with you on all of the soft skills that you didn't have a chance to develop when you were a child. Maybe your parents were hospitalized. Maybe they were alcoholics. Maybe they were absent. But for some reason, you didn't learn all of the things that you need to do to keep yourself in a job. Like, don't talk back to your boss. Wear your nice clothes. Um, try to do a good job. Keep a good attitude. Learn how to problem solve. Be proactive in your work. These are all things that so many of us learned. I mean, I was working when I was 16 at a, a little ice cream place. Um, and then right after college, I started into the Army. So I was working very early. But some of these kids didn't learn. Be on time. Be dependable. Let your boss know that he can trust you. Don't fight with your coworkers. Learn to peacefully resolve your issues. And so these soft skills, we give them a chance to what we call skin their knees by work, having them in an internship around City Mission. So we have eight thrift stores around southwestern Pennsylvania. And we have a large logistical system that sorts um, goods that people uh, donate to us. Um, so this is a social enterprise called um, Hope Enterprise. And, and our residents work in Hope Enterprise. They learn logistical issues. They learn management issues. They sort all of these goods. They develop trucking schedules and they truck them out to these thrift stores and with our eight thrift stores, all of the products and um, all of the um, the things that are sold, all the, the money from that, the profits from that, the surplus, comes back to the programs and services for the homeless. So they know that when they're working in one of our thrift stores or they're working in janitorial, working um, as a cook um, somewhere around City Mission, that they're actually helping the mission to function. How, and we, what's the average age? I mean, a, this is great stuff that you're doing to help people get back on their feet and teach them the soft skills that they missed as, as younger people. What's the average age of, of, of uh, I mean, you, you get people coming in there. They're, they're not out of high school. They're not just out of college. How old are they? No, we, we, we get everywhere from at, at 22, 25 to people who are in their 40s, about a third of our people are over the age of 55. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. And we literally have a class where we teach them how to use a smartphone because they don't know how to access the social services that they need. Everything now is online. So we have a class where we teach them how to use a smartphone to access social services, how to how to con- schedule a veterans appointments at the veterans hospital. Um it's it's kind of amazing how much they miss by um, being homeless and not being a part of this vast social network that we have in the United States, but being disenfranchised from it. So we say, what don't you know? And how can we give that to you so that you can be a part of this again? We also try to connect them to a church. Spirituality is one of the things we work on. Because if you can connect to an area church, you can connect to such a such a wonderful a giving, kind social network who makes you feel like a part of a family. We also employ a number of them back here at City Mission. They love what it's given them. Like I said, I, I've been here for eight years now. I don't have plans to leave. And most of the people who are here have been working here long term because we love what we do. But we say, you want to come back and work at City Mission? Maybe you can help us with what we do here. Yeah. So we we try, we try to say the, your potential is unlimited once you're ready to move to independence and start that part of your life. Yeah, that, that's awesome, uh, Sally. Um, it, it, you know, it'd be great if there were other city missions in other places so that homeless people knew they could come there. Uh, tell me, uh, what's the easiest way for somebody, if they wanted to support you financially, what's the easiest way for them to support the, the work of City Mission? That's, that is a great question. www.citymission.org. That's our website. That little red donate button is on every single page of our website. Just click on the donate button and we would love to have any of your donations. Oh, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. Uh, uh, keep up the, the good work that you're doing, Sally. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just so very, very important. Um, uh, and, and given the fact that homelessness is so pervasive uh, throughout the, the, the Commonwealth and the country, uh, what you're doing really is a model for the rest of us uh, to, to have where we live. So God bless you and the work that you're doing. Um, Thank you. And, and, Thank and, you, Joe. And, yeah, continue to serve the Lord. Well, with that, I'd invite you to write me a note and let me know how this conversation on the city mission, the work that Sally so eloquently described, has inspired you to love and serve your neighbors in deeper ways. You can find the comment box at joewatkins.org. I'll read and respond to every one of them as I'm able. And hopefully you're moved today to not just uh, be content to be a Christian, but to be somebody who, who shows people that, that the love of Christ is in you by, by serving them, by helping them. Maybe in the same way that Sally's helping the people in her community. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, America's first capital, I'm Joe Watkins. Thanks so much for watching. God willing, I'll see you next week. Joe Watkins' State of Independence is a production of Lighthouse TV, positively different. Made possible in part because of the support of viewers like you.